Hi everyone, today I wanted to share with you why I feed my horses the way I do. My helmet is crooked, um, and what I feed them. So I have my horses on a forage-based diet, meaning that they don't get fed grain. To balance their diet from what they don't get mineral and vitamin-wise in their hay, I give them a vitamin supplement. Where I get my vitamin supplements from is Mad Barn. I use the Amino Trace for certain horses, and then I use the Omniety for others. And then I feed them soaked beet pulp and alfalfa cubes, which are considered a forage. And the nice thing about feeding soaked feed like that is that not only is forage healthier for them than grain is, but what it also does is it helps make up the amount of water content that they have lost when they're eating hay. Because if we're looking at how horses are naturally meant to function, they would be grazing and trickle feeding, which means eating small amounts throughout the day, like live vegetation. They wouldn't really be eating a whole lot of dead, dry things. So there would be a higher water content in what they're eating, especially if we're talking grass. Like when horses are eating fresh grass, they tend to drink less water because the grass has more water content in it. But with that said, they've done studies on horses who have hay-based diets. And what they've noticed is that even though horses who are on hay-only diets and don't have access to fresh grass are getting less water from their food, the amount of water that they drink is not enough to make up for the water content lo lost. So what it means is that horses who are only eating hay have a tendency to drink way more water than horses who are on grass, but even still the amount of water that they drink doesn't completely make up for the water lost when they're getting dry based foods. So feeding soaked feed wherever you can rather than just feeding dry feed is smart. Even if you do feed grain, you can soak it if your horse will eat it. You might have to slowly get them used to it if they're picky with the texture, but it's always a good idea because it can help prevent issues such as colic because impactions for example can be the result of not having enough water in the digestive system now anyways this is what the feed looks like it's a mix of alfalfa cubes and beet pulp i give horses such as harlow more of the alfalfa cubes than beet pulp because they're harder keepers it's the most out of everybody so that's her bucket without the supplements in and then this is everybody else's buckets my mustangs just get a small amount and then the two babies just get a really small amount and I also only feed them once a day. I don't do two separate feedings because it's easier for me and it just works better. Um, and they don't really eat very much food outside of their hay. So it, they don't really need two feedings from a volume standpoint. And I actually have two off the track thoroughbreds that I feed on this diet. There's this belief that thoroughbreds need to be on grain in order to sustain their weight. That is not true. I'll show some photos of my horses. They look totally fine. They're at a healthy weight and they maintain their weight well. Grain is not necessary in the diet to sustain weight, especially when you're feeding enough hay. A lot of facilities that I've boarded at in the past fed too little hay and then would try to make it up by pumping the horses full of grain, which would make their weight look fine but it would cause them to suffer from things like ulcers because they would be going without hay for pretty lengthy portions of the day. Ideally, your horses should be on free choice hay, meaning that they have hay in front of them at all times. For horses who have issues with gaining too much weight, you can do this by using slow feed hay nets. All of my horses are fed out of slow feed hay nets because it slows down their consumption and it also keeps things tidier so that they don't drag the hay everywhere and poop and pee all over it, so that's great. But yeah, there's a link between high starch diets, aka grain-based diets, and colic. So horses who are eating more starch in their diets have a higher risk of colic. So feeding a forage-based diet, what I've noticed is that my horses are healthier, they're generally happier, and they have lower energy from the standpoint that they're not too hot and excitable and nervous, and they keep their weight really nicely, and I also haven't had a colic in a very long time. My thoroughbred mare, Harlow, did have a colic a couple of years ago after I moved her to a different facility. The reason for that wasn't dietary related. She'd been moved to a place where they had auto waterers and she wasn't drinking enough water. So this is also why I said water in the diet is really important for avoiding colic. So Harlow, Milo, Banksy, and Pogo get the amino trace. And then my Mustangs and my little two-year-old Gala get the Omniety. And also throughout the winter, I give them a little bit of natural vitamin E because when they're not on grass, they get less vitamin E. Fresh grass is higher in vitamin E. So there's their little buckets before I mix them. And this is what the Omniety pellet looks like. And then this is the Amino Trace pellet. And yeah, it's super easy. I just soak their feed the night before and then I feed them the next day. And if you want to soak it faster, you can soak it with like boiling water and then it'll soak way faster. You just want to make it sure it's cool enough before you feed it to the horses. 
and I've been really happy with having them on the diet. It's never been easier to keep weight on my thoroughbreds than it has since I've transitioned them to a forage-based diet. And I very much grew up with the mindset that horses needed grain and that you couldn't have like a competitive show horse without feeding them grain. And that definitely thoroughbreds couldn't be healthy without grain. And I realized I was wrong. I did an interesting podcast with the founder of Mad Barn for anyone who's interested in looking at my podcast, Making Milestones. And he actually talks about the forage-based diet, even for high-level sport horses, like that are burning a lot of calories, such as endurance horses. So yeah, then I just give their feed pans a little mixy poo with a spoon and then they're ready to feed them. What I've also noticed since I pulled them off of grain, there was an adjustment period for sure at first, but they've also been less food possessive and they've had less resource guarding issues at dinner time. And they've been less high strung at feed time. They used to be very excited and kind of would get pissy with each other at feed time. But since I transitioned them to this diet, it's gotten a lot better. Um, and I feed them at a different time every day. Like I don't feed at the same time every day. This is what it looks like after it's been mixed. And generally speaking, everyone likes their food. The Mustangs didn't eat pellets initially, so getting them to eat their supplements took a little bit, but then eventually they did. So after everyone eats, the last thing I have to do is just soak their food for tomorrow, which is simple, simple. So this is what we dry. These are obviously the alfalfa cubes, and then these are the feed pulps. And then I just fill the water to this line, which is correct based on the amount that I feed them. When you're feeding beet pulp or alfalfa cubes, you generally want to do at least twice the amount of water as you do of the cube or the beet pulp. But it honestly kind of depends on what brand you get because there's certain types of cubes that don't soak as well and need more water or certain types that need a little bit less water if you don't want them to be too soupy. So yeah, that's it and it's super simple. And then I cover it with a lid and then it's ready to feed tomorrow.